Hey guys, today I would like to talk about three underappreciated tools in Affinity Designer version 2. They are not hidden tools by any means. Very often we use them without actually realizing how powerful they are. So let's look into those three tools I want to mention today. The first will be a modern node tool. What do I mean by that? In the past, node tool allow us to modify only nodes. So if there's a pen tool, action like that, we use the pen tool and we are not really happy with the final result. All right, let's say we're making this blob here with the pen tool. It's not really perfect. So then you grab node tool. Node tool is perfect for fixing those little mistakes with the pen tool. So let's zoom in a little bit, comment plus. All right, in the past, I can only click on the set node and then modify those anchor points. And then I move to the next one and try to modify those anchor points, etc. So it's really powerful and allow, I would say, non-artistic people to do really nice art in a vector base because we can always modify after we drew something, we can always fix those mistakes, we can align stuff better. So you don't need this, this perfect stroke. You don't need to practice with art or digital art to get this perfect stroke. It's going to be ugly stroke. Then you just grab the node tool and move stuff around so you can move the whole node and we can modify the node. We can turn the curvy node like that into sharp node without those control points. We've got pointy and sharp node or all the way back to curvy node. But in the past, that was it. Nowadays, with the modern node tool, we can also grab a line itself. So I don't need to grab this node tool, try to modify it, and then next one. It's not ideal, so I go back to this one again. No, I can grab the line itself and those node tools around those lines. So I kind of modifying both node tools now on the left and right by grabbing the line. And this is really powerful. I remember reading a book when I was still a student about uh, one of the top illustrators at that time and his hidden weapon was a plugin for Adobe Illustrator that allowed him to actually grab the line itself. And I remember this plugin cost more than <laughs> I think designer right now, just the plugin. So right now we can grab a line itself, make all changes we need to the shape. So even the shape is not perfect, don't give up. Grab a node to make changes. You want to remove this node? Hit delete on your keyboard. You want to add a new one here? Just click on the line. So powerful tool and allow us to modify any existing shape and turn it into something else. Everybody knows about node tool. <laughs> don't forget, it's really powerful. If I need to point the most powerful tool, I will really hesitate between node tool and a pen tool here in Affinity Designer. So that's our modern node tool, allow us to grab the line itself. So don't forget about that, that's really powerful. All right, what is the next tool I wanna mention today? <laughs> Got this <laughs> underrated tools appreciation day. So the next tool is a shape tool. What's that, shape tool? Yeah, Affinity Designer, went extra mile with shape tool. Normally in other software, usually you got like what rectangle. And then if you hold shift, you got perfect square. You got oval tool. If you hold shift, you got perfect circle. And then usually there's a star tool and some kind of triangle tool that you can add more walls, more sides to make it into some other polygonal shape. So that's usually it for different option for the shape tool. In Affinity Designer, and also publisher and photo, we got this whole long selection here. Take a look how many different shapes they prepare for us already. So if you grab a diamond tool like that, that's not just flip rectangle. We got this orange control point. Take a look, I can grab that and I can move it down and up. You got this kite like shape diamond-like shape, and we can move it all the way down to make a normal triangle as well. So many of those 
special shapes come with those orange control points. I hope you can see them on my screen. It's this orange control point. That's the smart control point for the shape. Keep in mind, shape is a special type of layer. Take a look on my layer panel. This is a diamond shape type of layer, not a curve. So if I want to use the tool I mentioned before, the node tool, I cannot really do it right now. I need to convert to curves. Bam, now I got regular nodes and I can take it even further by adding more nodes or modifying existing one as I want. And remember, you can drag the line as well. But that's not about the node tool. Now we're talking about the shape tool. So that's just one example. Take a look how many different tools you got start to, of course. We can change this one just by grabbing this point. We can make this one to the center or opposite. Let's move it outside and then we can make careful. I grab not the control point. All right, make this little one rounded to the point. It's more like a flower than a star. How about points? Can I add more points? Look at the slider at the top. How many do you need? Okay. So we can modify some of those settings here from the top as well. It's the very same as I moving the orange point from those sliders at the top. But there is another star tool. This is for double star. So you don't need to combine two different stars yourself. You can just grab a proper double star tool. So in this case, you can modify every second arm to look different. And all other properties are still around. So we can make it really interesting. We can make it even negative going inside and give us this snow like graphic in seconds. So keep in mind, it's really powerful and there's so many different shapes. And I think the most underrated is this, this one over here. By default, you get shape like that, like Kirk shape, but you can change it pretty easily. And by default, there's hole inside. So it's really handy. I love to use it when I do some badges and stuff like that. I can make it like that or stamps. And you don't need to keep it this way. You can actually remove the distance between and take a look. That's already nice badge. Many badges got this nice ending like a stamp like you can make it. You can modify the angles, of course, but you can also make it rounded like this, almost like a flower, huh? Take a look, we move to the flower now. So powerful. And of course, in any given moment, you can convert this to curves. And then you start working like with regular vector curve. So that's really nice. Keep in mind, well placed shape can kick off your project, you can put two, three shapes, match them together, and you don't need to draw this base by hand using pen tool. Explore those shapes and learn about them because many veterans, <laughs> they keep in mind, oh yeah, we always use rectangle, square and oval. So I need to use that to make my next shape. Maybe this shape is already made for you. Maybe it's on the list here. So don't forget to check out that. For example, there's a speech bubble. So you don't need to do it by hand. Take a look. We can modify those settings here. You don't like rounded corners, no problem. Here it is. So there's proper speech bubble. It's already made for you. So don't forget about the shape tool list here at the bottom. What else is here? There's a heart shape tool. <laughs> so don't need to make a tutorial how to draw a heart shape in Affinity Design, I guess. I made that one already anyway. Okay, and this one is really handy as well. Like teardrop, water drop, and we can also move it left and right a bit. Very nice, very useful, and as I mentioned, Many of them come with those orange control points. You need half of the circle. Do I need to use Shape Builder too? No, there's actually a segment one that you can decide how much of the circle you need just by pulling this orange point and you got half of the circle already. That's nice. Okay, so the second underappreciated tool in Affinity Designer is a shape tool itself, in my opinion. And the last one I want to mention, that's not really a tool. That's more like a setting of our artboard. That's at the very top here, snapping. As you can see, we got this magnet icon turned on. In my case, now it's off. Now it's on again. What's the difference? So, if I got multiple shapes, take a look. If I move this guy around, it snapped to the center of the other shape. 
I don't need to make any guidance for it and I use it all the time. So snapping to geometry of the artboard, like here to the center of the artboard itself, or snapping to the geometry of another object. So I know they are aligned perfectly. I use it all the time. So keep in mind, you can turn it on, but also go deeper, open settings. And from here, you want to be sure that your snapping is to other object bouncing boxes, other object geometry, you can say here, object geometry, all right? That's really handy because they give us this temporary snapping guides, right? Take a look. It's almost like someone put the guiding line for us. And then when we stop using it, it's disappear. I almost never put <laughs> guiding lines nowadays because those smart lines, that's usually enough for me to finish my project. So keep in mind, we can turn on those snapping settings and we can customize them as well based on your current project. So keep in mind, we usually use three very powerful tools, combine them together and you can really do a lot in Affinity software. So that's snapping, very handy. We usually take it for granted nowadays. Shape tool is way more powerful than in other software. So explore that. Don't just <laughs> kind of rely on your memory or experience using only base shapes. There are many different shapes here we can use to kick off the project. And of course, modern node tool that allow us to grab the wall, the line of the shape itself not only modifying notes. All right. Which tool do you think is kind of underappreciated that you use all the time? It's really important for your workflow. Maybe you can mention this in the comment below to help others. And I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye.